you ever ask for something in prayer and you're like, man, is it going to work? I really hope it does. But I'm also not sure because I prayed for something before and it didn't work, but then I prayed for something that did work. How do I know what's going on? What makes me so sure when I pray? And how can I have more confidence when I pray? And maybe you're just kind of confused on how the whole thing works. Well, I'm going to show you something today. It is a key to answered prayer. And if you understand this, you might need to develop in this. You will need to develop in this. We all do, myself included. As we continue to work on this, we get to a spot where, man, we start to get whatever we ask for. And this is not manipulating God or making God move on our behalf or anything like that. I'm going to explain in just a minute. I'm going to give you the words of Jesus. I'm going to show you scripture that, man, maybe you just never looked at it like this before. Maybe it's one of those ones where if we just take a little bit of time, effort, and energy, let's study this. Wait, it says what? I never read it like that. We do that. A lot of this amazing life of success that God's made available to us becomes ours. We get to access it. I believe there's, you know, you've, maybe you've heard people talk about an inheritance table. People have talked about going up to heaven and seeing a warehouse with their name on it. And it was all the things that they could have accessed down here on earth, but they didn't ask for it. They didn't believe God for it. They just left it on the table, left it in the warehouse. Well, I don't want to do that. If God's made it available to me, I want to walk in it. I want to operate in it. I want to use it so that I can be successful for God's kingdom. I want to be as successful as possible for the kingdom. I want to produce much fruit for the kingdom. This scripture is going to show you how to do that. Quick question. If this content has blessed you, would you do me a favor? Would you consider and pray about joining the Increase Army and partnering with us to help get this Increase message out to more Christians? Done are the days where Christians live broke, paycheck to paycheck, and poor, sick lives. Never again. I'm getting Christians out of average and into the Increase life. And if you'd like to be a part of that, would you consider joining us? I'll put a link in the description below. If you do decide to partner with us, you pray about it, you get the green light, I'm going to give you exclusive access to members-only content. You're going to get access to our private community where you get to hang out with me. We do weekly coaching calls. We do Q&As. We do all kinds of stuff where you can ask me and my coaches questions. That way you don't get stuck on anything. We do more Bible studies and deep dives. It's awesome over there. We do a lot of great stuff. We'd love to hang out with you in exchange for partnering with us, which allows us to keep doing what we're doing and get this message out to Christians all across the globe. So pray about it, consider it, click the link below. I'll see you on the inside. Love you guys. Thanks in advance. All right, let's look at Matthew 21, 21. I'm going to be reading from the Amplified and a few other translations. This is right after Jesus cursed the fig tree. The, the cursed the tree, it withered up. The disciples and them walked by it again, and they were like, Whoa, Master, did you see? Did, did, you cursed a fig tree and it died. And he goes on to explain how he did it. And he says, You can do it too. He says, Jesus replied to them, I assure you and most solemnly say to you, if you have faith, personal trust, and confidence in me, and do not doubt, or allow yourselves to be drawn in two directions. We're going to talk about that. This is the Amplified. This is powerful. If you do not doubt or allow yourself to be drawn in two directions, you will not only do what was done to the fig tree, but even if you say to this mountain, be taken up and thrown into the sea, it will happen. And whatever you ask for in prayer, believing, you will receive it. Whatever you ask for in prayer. Okay, so let's look at that. Let's look at that word, whatever. Whatever you ask for. Don't put your own limits or conditions on that statement. It doesn't. We do this a lot with God's word. Is We'll say, well, it can't mean that because... 
It has to be exactly what God wills. I can't ask for anything and get it. What if I ask for something and God doesn't want me to have it? Well, listen, you're putting conditions on this that aren't there. It says, if you believe the red words of Jesus and whatever you ask for in prayer, believing, you will receive it. That word right there, believing, is the key. Remember the scripture right before it. It says, if you do not doubt or allow yourself to be drawn in two directions, you can speak to a mountain and the mountain will obey you. This is the God-given, delegated power and authority that he gave you the ability to do. Most people, you've read the scripture, Mark 11, 23 and 24 is Matthew's counterpart to this scripture. We might go there in a minute. But most people read that and they read it as pray to God and ask him to move the mountain that is in front of your path. But that's not the instructions. That's not how Jesus said it works. He says, if you do not doubt, if you don't allow yourself to be drawn in two directions, you can speak to the mountain. Remember the context. He just cursed a fig tree and the disciples said, how'd you do that? And he said, man, anyone can do that. If you have trust and faith in God and you do not doubt or allow yourself to be drawn in two directions, and you can not only do what I did to the fig tree, but you can say to a mountain, be thrown into the sea and it will obey you. And whatever you ask for in prayer, believing, you will receive. It's believing, comma, you will receive. All right, let's look at this in a couple other translations. Let's make sure we're getting the full scope of this. The Good News Translation says, If you believe, you will receive whatever you ask for in prayer. Now, I'll say this because some of y'all are thinking it. Every time I talk on this stuff, somebody's like, well, you can't ask for anything because what if you ask for drugs or prostitutes or to sin or it's like, yeah, duh, you're not going to, you're not doing this. Someone who's reading the Bible and applying these faith scriptures isn't doing that. You're not going to do that. You're not even talking about yourself. You're talking about some hypothetical person. So stop. John, let's just look at another one. Let's go to John uh, 15. We'll keep our, our place there. Here's kind of the proof, right? There's, there's several scriptures that say this. If you remain in me, John 15, 7, Jesus is talking. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, and the Amplified adds in, that is, if we are vitally united and my message lives in your heart. So that's you. You're united with Christ. His message lives in your heart, right? You're watching this video, most likely, Okay. Ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. Another translation says, ask whatever you will, and it will be done for you. So we add this thing in a lot where it's like, well, it's got to be God's will. And what we don't understand is God's will is not a specific list of individual items. Um, it's God's will for you to have this house, but not this one. Uh, a car at this level, but not a night, not a not a luxury car. No, um, hopefully you ask and pray correctly, and luckily you guess the right magic thing on his list, and he gives it to you. No, his will just means his desires and pleasures. Go look it up. I did a whole video called "How to Understand God's Will with Perfect Clarity." If I remember, I'll put the link in the description. It lines all this up and shows you exactly what God's will is. It's not mysterious like you think it is. If your words, if his words remain in you, his message remains in you, and you're vitally united with Christ, which you are, you're not going to ask for stupid stuff. So get that out of your system. Stop going there. That's just the enemy trying to talk you out of what belongs to you. You have the authority to speak to mountains. You can have whatever you ask for in prayer. You're united with Christ. His message lives in you. You're good. If you want to ask God for material things, you can't. 
If you want to call in the perfect house for your family on a piece of property, you can. You can say, God, I want a piece of property. I'm calling that thing in. It's going to be the perfect for my family. And it's going to be on 40 acres. We're going to have woods. We're going to have a pond. We're going to have a house. We're going to have room for multiple houses. So we can move my whole family in there. That's, do that. Ask for that. Whatever you ask for in prayer, here's the condition. If you believe it, you will receive it. If you don't believe it, if you just hope God does it and it's a strong wish, that's not believing. That's why you haven't gotten it. Let's look at another translation. If you believe, you will receive whatever you ask for in prayer. Let's go back to the original King James. I like this translation of it. Whatsoever, there it is again, you shall ask in prayer, believing you shall receive. And whatever things you ask in prayer, believing you will receive. Let's look at Mark 11. And let's go down to verse 24. Like I said, it's its counterpart. The King James puts it like this. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire, whatever things you desire, this is the King James, okay? And sometimes when I do another translation, people are like, it's not the King James. Here's the King James, all right? <laughs> what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. Don't let your mind be drawn in two directions. With confidence, when you ask, when you pray, that's when you've got it. You pray for it now, you have it now, even if you don't see it with your eyes. You're reaching into the spiritual realm and pulling it into the natural realm. I have it now. That is mine. Whatever things you desire, when you pray, believe that you've received it and you will have it. What is this saying? When you ask is when you receive. Asking is receiving if you do it in faith. Remember the condition, believing. Finances, health, business, fulfillment, calling, job, whatever it is. Get with God. Let his words abide in you and then go speak it. What's the desired result you want? What is the outcome that you want? Let's go to Hebrews 11.1. 1. This will strengthen this point. What I'm trying to get you guys to see is there's a better way to pray. Most of us pray with giant wishes hoping God will do something. But if you understand who you are and what belongs to you, you will understand that when you pray for it, you get it. Whatsoever things you desire, when you pray, believing you've received it, it will be yours. Hebrews 11.1 1. Now, not in the future, now, faith is the assurance. It is the title deed. It is the confirmation of the things that you hope for and are divinely guaranteed. It is the evidence of things not seen. It is the conviction of their reality. Faith comprehends as fact what cannot be experienced by the senses. All right, that was the amplified pulling out some of those deeper definitions of the original words. It is the title deed and the confirmation of the thing you're hoping for. So God, you're, I'm believing you for this awesome piece of property for my family. Man, I'm asking you for it. it said, you said, God, whatever things I ask, whatever I desire, when I pray, believe I receive them. God, I thank you that I've got it now. Asking is receiving. I've asked, I've prayed, I've got it. I desire it. Thank you. Psalms 37, 4 says, God will give you the desires of your heart if you delight yourself in him. Well, God, I delight myself in you. So you give me the desires of my heart. And I have a desire for this property. I have a desire for investments 
to take care of my future, but also my kids, my grandkids, and my great grandkids. That's the desire of my heart. Well, Trav, only only if that's God's will. If it's not His will for you guys to be wealthy, well, then it's then you can pray for that. No, you're missing it. That's why you're living the life you're living. That's why your family has been mired in poverty, in generational poverty, thinking like this. God, I thank you right now that my kids, my grandkids, and my great grandkids will be taken care of financially. I'm going to leave them an inheritance, Proverbs 13, 22, because I'm a good man. That's what I'm going to do. And God, I thank you. Your word says in James 1, 5, I can ask you for wisdom. He says, I want everything I pray for, whatever things I desire, when I pray, believe I receive them. I'm believing for full investment accounts for them. I'm believing for this legacy property. Um, I'm believing God for this ministry. I'm believing God that we can help and touch and reach more people with the message of increase. None of that is wrong because God's message is in me. And it says, I can ask for whatever I wish, whatever I will, and it will be done. I'm believing. I'm receiving. I don't let my mind go in two ways. I don't receive any doubt. I reject doubt. It's done. It's finished. It's now. I have the assurance, the title deed, the confirmation of it now when I spoke it. That's how you operate like this. And think about the the, the times when, like the woman with the issue of blood, right? She comes in, through, presses through the crowd, and keeps saying, if I can touch the hem of his garment, I'll be healed. She's just enacting this. She's just putting in Mark eleven twenty four, 24, Matthew 21 and 22. She's just putting it all together. She's just, that's what it looks like in real life. She goes and she touches the hem of his garment. What does he say? Your faith has made you well. She believed it. She spoke it. She got it. She had it. She had the title deed, the confirmation. She just needed to carry out the action, carried out the action. He said, your faith has made you well. Your believing made you well. Your speaking made you well. You did it. It's God's power. It's God's power flowing through you. It's that delegated power and authority. But he puts it on you. Whatsoever things you desire, when you pray, believe you received them, it'll be yours. You speak to the mountain. You speak to the fig tree. You do it. I gave you the power. I gave you the authority. Now go. Man, look. I'm not taking credit for anything. You're not taking credit for anything. It's his power working in you, working through you. Philippians 2.13 talks about this. Ephesians 3.20 talks about his power always effectively working in you. Cool. Let's go use it. Believing I've received it. I've got it. I have it now. I ask God for it. It's something I desired, and he gives me the desires of my heart, and I speak to the mountain, and I tell that sickness and disease to go. I'm healed now. I tell poverty paycheck to paycheck and lack to go, get out, be cast into the sea. Now, man, my family's prosperous. My family always has more than enough. My family's needs are taken care of and I got plenty to give to every good work according to 2 Corinthians 9, 8. I speak it, believe it, I got it, I have it and I thank the Lord for it. Okay, take these scriptures, apply them to you today. Ask God for help on this. Lord, help me believe. I believe, help my unbelief. I'm no longer a doubter. I start speaking this stuff. I don't doubt God's word. I believe God's word. My mind does not go in two directions. It is laser focused on him and what he said. Man, I'm gonna read it to you one more time. And we'll we'll close with this because it's just so simple. We've made it so complicated. We put our own conditions on, on it. And he just says, Matthew 21, 22, and whatever you ask for in prayer, believing you will receive. That's it. I love you guys. If this blessed you, would you hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell. I go live. I've got content and training and all kinds of awesome stuff coming out all the time. You don't want to miss any of it. If this has blessed you, Would you consider partnering with us, joining Team Increase, as we call it? It helps support us and the channel and my family, helps us continue doing what we're doing. If you do, 
I'm going to give you access. We've got a private membership where you get to hang out with me. We've got exclusive content. We've got a whole bonus library of awesome content and trainings that are going to help you in your faith, finances, family, fitness, and fulfillment. And we want to help you win. That's what we do around here. So click the links in the description below. Check it out. We have a weekly Bible study. It's free. I want you to be a part of that as well. We got all kinds of cool stuff here at The Increased Life. I invite you to be a part of it. I love you guys. I will see you in the next one.